What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and no, your eyes are not deceiving you. We are back with Pez 2015. So if you are new to the channel and you've just stumbled onto this video, we usually obviously deal with eFootball, but there was a time when the Pez series was at the top, I thought. Pez 15 was a personal favorite of mine and I'm going to show you my club and how it functioned, what it looked like, how you sign players. Because a lot of people didn't probably play my club, especially the newcomers. But for you veteran guys, this would probably bring back a lot of nostalgic uh, feelings and a lot of, um, of good feelings, hopefully. I mean, obviously, uh, it was a frustrating mode at the best of times. But you can see here just an overview of how you used to sign players. So there was no GP marketplace. Everything was done through agents. I'm going to give you an example of it here. So this is from footage I found on an old hard drive uh, when I was back doing uh my youtube way back when i mean you're talking about 2014 um and this is how you used to sign players right so there was a list of agents there was a list of top agents and then you can see there the likelihood of getting it but you could also buy with gp and coins now the coins were an absolute ripoff because gp was so easy to get in it and so easy to farm and it was only 10,000 gp uh, whereas the coins you actually had to buy it was the same system a lot of the same systems and features that are in eFootball currently are still in and were still in uh, my club or were originally originally in my club, right? Now, I think that the faces and the look of the players and everything, I forgot how bad they actually looked um, because I think the gameplay was super fun. You'll see a couple of limitations with the gameplay, but this is my squad. This is the Beasts, Midnight Kid FC. The team spirit is there, everything. We'll have a better look at the screen in a second, but this is just my basic squad. So I think I'd only been playing the game for maybe... Not that many games, anyway. We were still low with vision, right? But we'll go through it fairly quick just to give you a sample of it. Now, I have a load of other clips. I'm going to be doing PES 16 next as well. I think that's when it really hit its stride. PES 16 and 18 were probably my two favorite games, as you see some of the, the players there. But you can actually see here, right? And we'll get a closer look at this in a second as I try to fill out my squad, right? You had your subs, your reserves. You had a couple of different things going on as well, right? But the big thing about this was, right, is that there was a lot of tactical um, changes you could make to your squad, which I personally loved, right? Because you could actually beat people tactically if they didn't know what they were doing. And the pace of the game was very slow. There was no real overpowering feature like 1-2 meta passes through the middle, crosses. It was kind of balanced. Obviously, there was limitations to the speed of the game but you can see there are a lot of the tactical links and stuff like that in the bottom right and this is obviously the matchmaking then as well so we are in division nine you could see that the team strength there that was a filter option in it so you had the team strength level and usually you got matched up with guys that had outrageous teams like i remember starting this and you'll see this is one of my first games and the guy had an outrageous team um i think i only left in a couple of clips and we played another match then as well to give you the flow of the game right but yeah this was something i'd like to definitely see come back to eFootball 24 and i think they will do it we do actually um get a match up here and this was one of my first games or maybe i played a couple of games i'm not too sure i think you started in division 12 um but i think it was like one win to get up to division 11 10 and then nine um and i think there was a bit of ai sprinkled in there as well but i could be wrong i mean we're going back nearly 10 years but this was all the basic the layout of it right this is your team so this is an example of the team the game plan okay so you had his team on the left you have the team spirit that's still uh prevailing today you have obviously the positions you can see some of the players have got like orange kind of glows off them or orange that was basically how um effective they were in that position so this guy's got manuel neuer in goals he's got benzema up front he's got delafeo he's got uh giovinco socrates he's got a very good team at the back here um but we're gonna play a different squad here i think this was a different squad maybe this was the first squad i'm not too sure but anyway it doesn't really matter the gameplay is just kind of um what we want to focus on here right so I mean, let me know what you guys think of this gameplay, right? Like, the first thing that you will notice is that the, the, the screen, the graphics, the color, the presentation and everything, like, it was so muted, like, and I still think that eFootball has that problem where the colors of the pitch, um, you'll see a lot of, like, collisions, and you'll see a lot of stuff. Um, this was obviously one of, the, one of the earlier versions of PES 15. Um, I mean, let me know your thoughts of the gameplay. I mean, this is obviously a game that is a, a very, very old, right? The one thing I always remember about PES 15 the most was the dribbling. And even going through some of my old clips, it's very easy to see um, kind of why I enjoyed it and why I have fond memories of it. Because you could stop and start, you could do some nice dribbles, trick moves and stuff like that were quite overpowered. Um, it was kind of a dribble-centric game. Like, you'll see a chance here that I get... 
tight dribble and tight control, um, waiting for the opponent to make a mistake, waiting for the opponent to dive in. Now, as you got up the levels, the speed of the game did improve and it did um, it did increase, which some people didn't like. PES 2016, which we'll focus on in another video, uh, if you guys like these, just kind of a, a retrospective look back um, of a revisit. PES 16 was crazy fast, like I mean crazy fast. It was literally a speed merchants game. And I think that was the year really where I played it the most. I enjoyed it at the time. But I would not like to see, you know, eFootball be that fast, kind of. That's all, like, PES 15 was probably a bit slow and clunky. Um, you can see here a lot of the animations, you know, fail to kick in and stuff. When you look at it now through the lens of, obviously, we're 10 years more further into game development. We've played 10 more football games or multiple more football games. But you can see kind of what they were trying to go for, especially in my club. There's very little lag there's no slowdown, there's no spikes, there's no input delay really. Um, it actually was a super fun game to play. Now obviously I'm looking through uh, with rose tinted glasses looking back at these clips. Obviously there was times when I was getting smacked, right, and it wasn't fun. But that's in every video game. But you can see the colouring of the of, of the of the stadiums and stuff. I mean it looks like you're playing on a on a washed out pitch. But you can see the little dribbles there. That's what I really liked and my memories of PES 2015. We're playing with the likes of Ribery, Tevez, Drogba. Uh, I think I had some. I think I had a Philip Lama at one stage. Ribery here. Look at this unbelievable roulette. Can't finish. Slips it to Keita and bombs it in. So, yeah, it was a fun game, especially when you were able to kind of play a bit of football. Um, and because the game was quite slow paced, you could actually get away with a lot of dribbles and a lot of like pass and move without it being overpowered pass and move. If you get me right. So let me know what you guys think. If this is your first time seeing PES 2015, this was the movement in points or the division. They were your rewards that you got. So everything was GP. You could get a team strength and a match rank bonus. So basically, if you were playing against a really high skilled opponent with a way better team than you, you would actually get more points even if you won or lost. So it was kind of a balancing act that if I was playing somebody that was division one um, and he had an insane team way stronger than me, uh, I'd still get more points just for losing to him because, you know, rather than beating somebody weaker squad than me. Just kind of a balancing act because the matchmaking was quite all over the place. You could be playing anybody at any team strength. You used to also get agents as well, and those agents meant that you could sign players, and the contracts were there. This is something I actually forgot, and I only spotted it towards the end of this video. Players whose contracts have expired. So we will might go into that in a second video if you wanted to revisit it again, but we will delve into that in PES 2016, because I think PES 2016 was when my club really hit its form in terms of the actual game, and in terms of actually being able to buy players and stuff like that. PES 15 was a lot of concept designs, but... Look, it's nice to look back at games like this, especially with an online aspect of it. Um, let me know what you guys think. And uh, if you like these videos, let me know and we'll do a few more of them. I literally have a hard drive from PES 14, 13, 12, all the way back and all the way forward to PES 2021. So let me know what you guys think and we'll talk to you in a bit.